This is 13-year-old Christian Fernandez, a boy raised in a house of horror. Neglect by his parents and grandparents only drove him to repressed anger, which later made him the youngest person in history charged as an adult with first-degree murder. Christian was born in Miami, Florida in 1999 to Bayanella Susana, who was just 12 at the time. The boy's 25-year-old father received 10 years probation for sexually assaulting her. When Fernandez was eight, the Department of Children and Families investigated a report that he was molested by an older cousin. By October of 2010, Fernandez and his mother were living with her new husband, when he suffered an eye injury so bad that his school sent him to the hospital, where he was examined for retinal damage. Fernandez told officers that his stepfather had punched him. When officers went to the family's apartment, they found the stepfather dead from a self-inflicted gunshot wound. But on June 3, 2011, deputies were called to the apartment. Fernandez's baby brother, David, was dead inside. After the police found blood on his shirt, they decided to interrogate him on what happened that day. Now looking at the room placement, you can tell that this looks like a high-pressure environment as he's made to sit in a corner against a detective. However, the detective decides to use the child's innocence to turn this interrogation into a conversation. Oh, you're 13 now. Mm -hmm. Oh, okay. So you're 13 years old. I'm 12. And I... Yeah, that's what I'm saying. 12. Okay. 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 All right. So today is... January 20th. 14th. It's the 15th now. 15th. <laughs> it was the 14th, but it's the 15th. And it's late. Ooh. Okay. What this says is this is your constitutional rights, okay? Um, and this is what they don't want to read it to you, okay? And I just need you to sign here that you understand them. You have a nice cursive. Mm -hmm. My son's working on his. That looks good. Do y'all have to write everything in cursive at school? Hmm? Do you have to write everything in cursive yeah. at school? No? Now from the start, we have to give props to Detective Nichelle Soleg for being so calm and engaging in her responses, considering that this is such a complex case. Tonight you were home. Well, you told me. You said before, um, in January, he, he got hurt, right? Mm -hmm. And he had broken his leg, little David. Mm -hmm. And how did he break his leg in January? By yoga. Yoga? Mm -hmm. In what room were you guys in? In, in our room. Okay. You share a room with him? No, my, he always goes to my, she's always sleeping with my mom. Okay, so he sleeps with your mom. Oh. And you and your five-year-old brother and your four-year-old sister all share a room. Mm-hmm. So, um, y'all were in your room doing yoga. Mm -hmm. Were y'all watching a video or something, or? No. So what were, what exactly happened that, that day in January? That I put him, his legs to, and back of his front. Okay, like how, can you show me? I mean, you probably can't, flexible, but do, like how did you do his legs? Like, like the Indian stuff. Like the Indian stuff? Mm -hmm. So like, did you put like the leg behind his neck? Or how did you do it? Like in the floor, behind, behind him. Oh, so like a, kind of like a reverse Indian style? Mm -hmm. So like, you put the legs behind him? Mm -hmm. Were y'all watching that on TV or something? No. Where'd you see that at? In the book. In where? In the book. You still have that book? Mm -hmm. Where did that book come from? From when I was in Miami. Oh, Miami, okay. Who else was in the room when that happened? Me and him. Just y'all too? Mm -hmm. Where was your mom at? I think you, she was taking my brother to school. So, okay. Oh, here we go. Oh, yeah. I know he doesn't really look like your brother, but you can show me with the doll how he did that. You want to show me? So, he was sitting like this, and then how did you do his legs so we can understand happened? Like this. Oh, and then what else did you do with his legs? Um, like this. Not so. You you pushed him back. Mm hmm You didn't twist the leg up or anything. Or? What do you mean like like? No, I don't know. I'm asking like exactly what you did. Show me again what you did. Oh, okay. 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 Well, did you hear a snap or something? Did you hear a pop? Well, sorry. Yeah. And what happened then? He started crying and then I stopped. Oh. And um. So how long was it before your mom got home? A couple of like, minutes. And what did you tell your mom about him? I don't remember the story that I made before. That what? What I what I told her before. What do you mean? 
I didn't tell her that when I was doing yoga with her. Oh, what, what did you tell her? What did you tell her? I don't remember. What oh, I told you don't remember what you told her is what you're saying? Mm -hmm. Oh, okay. How long did he cry for? A long time? Mm hmm. At this point, you can tell that the mother is clearly instilling the wrong messages in her child by not being vigilant of her child's behavior. Looking at the 2011 incident where his brother broke his leg, you can see that instead of making the boy realize his mistake, he was later pushed to lie about how his brother got injured in the first place. Tonight, you guys were in your room, just you and David? Mm -hmm. With your other brother and sister in there? Mm -hmm. So all y'all? No, I think it was just me and him too. Just y'all too? Mm -hmm. So tell me, tell me what really happened tonight. I put him to carry books. You put him to carry books? Mm hmm Okay, what kind of books? Like the books that we have on our bookshelves. Are they big books or little books? Or? Like a bunch of skinny books. Okay, so he was carrying them? Mm-hmm. Does he walk good with that one cast on? I think he starts with one and normal walks with the other. Okay, so he had books in his arms? Mm-hmm. And then what happened? And then they fell on him. They fell on him as he was carrying? As she was carrying them. Where they fall on him? On his, on his, like, on his head. And, you know. How did they fall on his head if he was carrying them? Um, like this, he was carrying them. Because he didn't know how to carry away. So then what else happened? And then they fell on him, and then he fell. This side of his head is really injured up with a lot of bruising and swelling. Mm -hmm. So, and his nose is really swollen up. Well, he didn't get those head injuries just from books. That's why we need to know the whole story. Because that can't happen from just books. You know what I mean? That's not the truth, Christian. At this point, the detective realizes that he's no stranger to lying. Even when she brought up the idea that he hit his head on a bunk bed after his ludicrous book-carrying story, he casually denied it. So now, Detective Silveg has to switch gears and, considering his openness, can easily tell him where he's lying without the worry of him choosing to stay silent. It's okay. I just, I just need to know the truth. So, you know, just like you told me the truth about January, and you're doing a good job. Well, there's something else that happened tonight, because earlier, you know, I know that you, you told all the officers and everybody that he climbed up the ladder on the milk bed and fell, but that wasn't the truth, was it? Okay, I don't think it's the truth, baby. Actually, I know it's not the truth. He's got really bad head injury. So if you can tell me how he got that, it would be really helpful for him. So what happened tonight? We'll just start over. Because it's, it's okay. We just need to know the truth. So what exactly happened tonight with David? I put him to carry books. No, that's not. Is that what your mom's going to tell me? That's not what your mom's going to tell me, is it? No. Okay. I'm going to ask you again, Christian, one more time. What happened with David tonight? That's not what happened. The detective is now trying to empathize with him in this situation as a way to get him to confess. She also brought up that while he's in this interrogation room telling her that he got injured from carrying books, he told the officers earlier that his brother climbed up on the ladder on the bunk bed and he fell. An inconsistency like this only makes him more guilty. So to get to the truth, the detective will now give this boy an emotional perspective of the situation. You have to be honest with yourself, too. And you need to be honest for little Davy's sake. Because Davy's not feeling too good right now, okay? And he deserves for you to tell us the truth. Because then I'm going to go and, and I'm going to ask your mom, too. But I don't think that's what your mom's going to tell me. And I don't think that's what your little brother and sister are going to tell me, either. I'm going to give you the opportunity to tell me, okay? So let's just take a deep breath and tell me. When you and David were in the room together tonight, what happened? You can tell me. You can tell me. Okay? You can tell by the boy's downward gaze and silence that he's starting to feel guilty, especially when the detective brings up little Davy. Now, while this is effective in interrogation for adults, some vulnerable individuals can sometimes feel the emotional burden too much and they might end up making a false confession. But, considering that his current lie is that his baby brother hurt himself from carrying books, it's without a doubt that he's hiding something and is very close to confessing. And at this point, the smartest, or in some cases the riskiest thing a detective can do, is to say the word that the detective wants the other person to say. 
just lay them down. What do you mean stone? Like on the ground. Well, well what happened to it? Like them. Well, just tell me what happened to David. Tell me the truth, and that way you don't have to lie anymore. You don't have to make up stories. Okay. And if you tell the truth, so just tell me exactly what happened. Tell me what happened to me. What are you scared of? I'm just scared of him. Um, I don't know. I can see. Did your mom do something to David? No. But you did. See, so you're getting there. It's okay. So you tell me, okay? What, what did you do to David tonight? Okay. You don't want to sit there. I don't have to. I think you're going to be too long. Do you feel bad about what happened tonight? Is that why it's hard for you to tell me? Yes. Okay. If we do things that are wrong, Christian, and we feel bad about it, okay? Yeah. Okay. So tell me what happened tonight. I pushed on my desk. A bookshelf. Okay. Where's the bookshelf at, Mama? In front of my sister's bed. And how did you push him, Mommy? Like, what was he doing for you to push him? Nothing. Why'd you push him? Were you angry about something? Yes. What were you angry about? No, well, my sister did it to me. Oh, your sister did to you? Is that what you said? Yeah. Why were you angry about that tonight? Because I was thinking a lot. Is there a reason why? Yeah. No. Is this because he was there? Yes. How many times did you push him into the... Show. Twice. You pushed him pretty hard. Like, what do you think? Did you push him pretty hard? Mm-hmm. What'd you say to him? You say bad words to him? Yeah. What'd you say to I him? I didn't say anything to him. So, um, what shelf did he, did he hit it, what, how did, where did he hit it on the bookshelf? On the first one. Can you show me with the doll how you pushed him into shelf? By his hand. So, show me with the doll what you, how you... Like, push it in. Oh, okay. So... You pushed him with your hand mm-hmm. into the shelf. What would, did he cry or did he just? Yeah, he cried. Did he pass out and go to sleep? Mm-hmm. Did he do that right away? I ran away and I hit twice. Is that all that happened tonight? Mm-hmm. So how did all the blood get everywhere in the room? Because when I was dragging him to his bed, I actually carried him. Okay, to what bed? To my brother's bed. The bottom bunk? Mm-hmm. Okay. So you carried him to the bottom bunk and... Where was he bleeding from? From his nose. Okay. Anywhere, anywhere else? In my, his mouth. His mouth was bleeding. And just like that, the boy confessed to pushing his brother into his father's bookshelf twice. Interestingly, you may have noticed that the detective goes from heavy questions to mild questions as soon as she gets a heavy answer from the boy. Like, after he said he pushed him into his father's bookshelf, she immediately redirected him by inquiring about the bookshelf. Two mild answers later, he confessed the heavy truth, which is great work from the detective. Now, during this horrific incident, you might be wondering where the parents were. So, let's see about that. How long was he like that before you told your mom? I told my mom right away, but I didn't tell her what happened. I told her something else. What did you tell her? That he got hit with the ladder. Did she believe you? Yes. And your little brother and sister were in the room when that happened? Mm-hmm. What was your mom doing when this happened? I don't, I don't, I don't know. Okay. Maybe I'm driving. Was she home or no? <clears throat> where was she at? Taking my brother to school. I mean, I'm not sure where she was. But she wasn't home when it happened? Mm-hmm. Did she make you babysit your brother and sister a lot? Mm-hmm. But not a lot. Okay. So you stay at home with him a lot. I mean, not a lot, but that's, you babysit him. personal problem. Okay. But when I'm babysitting, they always stay together. Uh-huh. But where were the other two tonight when your mom was gone? Louis was still with me and Yanni was with my mom. So just you and David were in the room? No, me and my, and my sister. Okay, so your other brother was with your mom. <coughs> mm-hmm. Okay, so your sister was in the living room and David was in the room with you. Mm-hmm. Okay. Um, did you call your mom as soon as it happened? Or did you just Not wait for her to come? As soon as it happened. I realized what I've done. So you realize he was hurt. Mm-hmm. And how long did it take her to get home? Um, a couple of minutes. And then what did she do when she came home? She cleaned them. And then she went to the hospital. And cleaned them and changed his clothes. She cleaned them and cleaned, changed his clothes? Well, I think she, she changed his clothes because I was in the I didn't see him after. Was she crying? Mm-hmm. So did she, you said that she got on the computer before she went mm-hmm. to the hospital? 
No, she was on the, on the phone on the computer. Okay. Do you know what she was looking at? No. According to the reports, Christian called her around 9 a.m., and his mother didn't call the doctor nor take the toddler to the hospital until about 5.25 p.m. Even then, as her son lay bleeding in the other room, she surfed the internet, downloaded music, and made some medical-related searches with the keywords concussion and unconscious for hours. Not to mention that she left her 5-year-old with her 12-year-old, who had already shown signs of anger towards his little brother. Did your mom tell you, say anything different? when? Like came? to, but she didn't know it was, it was me that did it. Right. So I'm sure not. Okay. This is actually a good sign of ignorant parenting. As a 12-year-old, Christian had no idea that doing something like that would harm his little brother. It's only when parents are vigilant of their children's interactions that they can educate them on what is right and what is wrong. He had no idea that he'd break his brother's bone by doing what he calls the Indian. In fact, when David fell unconscious, Christian picked him up and laid him in his bed. He denied intent to kill his brother, and several times asked the officers if doctors could wake him up. This shows how considerate he is, and that he never intended to kill. After the detective steps out and gives him 10 minutes to think about the situation, she decides to tell him the truth about whether his little brother survived or not. Yes, he's like too little for that. Too little to, to not Mine his heart is weak, so if his heart stopped working. Why is his heart weak? Because he's small. Because he's small. And if, and if his heart stops, then he, he stops. And he's still, he hasn't even. So and he has never done that. Never done that before. No, no, no. Is that why you knew it was bad? Because that's what I've done before. I've seen my cousin do it, but that's how he sleeps. Oh. Because he, he has had that a lot of times. Has he? Mm -hmm. So that's why he, he sleeps like that. But David has never done it, so I'm worried. His, um, his little, his, his brain started swelling. Like bigger or smaller? Bigger. Mm -hmm. So it touches his brain. So his head. Uh, it's not good. No, it's not good. But you're old enough and smart enough to know that it didn't look good when you did it, correct? And it doesn't sound good from what you're asking me and what I'm telling you, right? Can I ask you a question? Mm -hmm. Why'd you push him twice? I don't know. I don't know. I don't even know why I pushed him. Is he still standing up from the first push after you yeah, pushed him? Yeah, he was. He was. Uh, he's, he's, he, he stunned with him. Did he cry? Yeah, the first time. Cried. And then you pushed him again. Mm -hmm. I just stopped crying. Well, I think I'm gonna go and talk to your mom now. Okay. And I'm gonna have to tell her tell her the truth, okay? And what happened. Well let me go talk for a few minutes and I'll come back. Okay? You okay? Dear mom? After this interrogation ended, the detectives had a clear confession against Christian, but a judge dismissed it, citing that he did not understand his Miranda rights during police questioning. However, he was found guilty of first-degree murder as an adult. And yes, there was a sexual assault charge against him as well, but that was dismissed. At the time, he was 13, so he was given a juvenile life sentence, which means staying in jail till he turns 19. In July of 2018, he was placed on probation. The judge also ordered Christian to stay away from minors and not to have contact with his surviving siblings unless they first contacted him. Oh, and in case you're wondering about the ignorant mother, she pled guilty to manslaughter and she was placed on probation for 10 years. This was how a 12-year-old misunderstood boy with a tainted history of abuse and neglect went on to kill his own brother without intending to. This was the horrific case of Christian Fernandez. And as always, thanks for watching.